a show all about kids. That's right, coming up right after this. Okay, everybody enjoy. Hey kids, here's some more chips. Hi, I'm Alan Smith. Welcome to Garden Style, a show about interesting and fun ways to grow, cook, and design your world. Now, in today's show, we're going to have some fun with the kiddos and teach them a little bit about gardening. We'll visit the children's garden at Chicago's Garfield Park Conservatory to see how they're teaching kids about the fun world of plants. And we'll meet the winner of Bonnie's third grade cabbage program at Daisy Bates Elementary. Then later in the show, some projects you can do at home with your future gardeners. We have so much to see and do, so stick with us. We'll be back right after the break. I gotta have one of these chips. Mm. Salsa is so good. Do you all know where salsa comes from? Salsa's a dance. Well, that's a right. Jar. Yeah. A store. Well, well, yeah, store. But you know, it actually comes from plants first, like tomatoes and an herb called cilantro. Hey, what about us planting some of those plants? Would you like to grow some? Yeah. Oh, come on, let's go. Let's get started. You know, growing plants from seed is so easy. I just want to show you a couple of things here that I have set up and it makes it so simple. First thing we're going to do is we're going to create a soil or a base to grow the plants in. So these are little wafers. I'm going to pass these around so you can look at them. Look at that. And what you do is you just place them in a container like this and by adding just some water, what will happen is that these little wafers, which are made of peat moss, will expand and it creates a perfect environment for that seed to begin to grow in. So today, I think what we're gonna do is we're gonna plant some tomatoes, and one of my favorite tomato varieties for salsa is one called San Marzano. It's an Italian tomato. It's really a great sort of meaty, delicious tomato. It's not too juicy, so it makes a really good salsa. Now, I have to tell you, the thing that always astonishes me that you can get these really big, beautiful tomatoes from a tiny little seed like that. Now, I want everyone to take a seed Take a seed, everybody pick a seed out. Maybe two, you can have two. You all get some seed. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna plant these. And it only takes about seven to 10 days for these tomatoes to germinate. That means they come up, there you go. Grab a couple of those max, there you go. All right, now, then take those seed and put them in the center of one of these little peat pods like this. Drop it down in there, and then just cover it up with the peat moss, just like that, okay? See what I did? You just add those there. There you go, Olivia. You do that one. All right, and Max, come on around here and you finish it up. So see, we've planted these little tomatoes. It's that easy. We just need to make sure that we give them plenty of moisture. You can see how the heat pod has really hydrated. It's full of water. And we'll give these plenty of sun and they'll begin to germinate. And then once they put out about four leaves, we'll be able to plant them out into the garden. Isn't that great? Okay, so now let's talk about the cilantro. We're gonna plant this in a slightly different way. And these are cilantro seed. Let me open up this pack. You know, salsa has lots of different wonderful flavors in it. One of the flavors comes from this herb, and it's a very leafy herb. Look at those seeds, they're much larger, aren't they? What I want everybody to do is to get a couple of cilantro seed. There you go, and we're gonna plant those about the same depth, about a quarter of an inch. And we're gonna divide this little planter we have some potting soil in here. Let's take this half and put one here and one here, and one here and one here and one here. That's a space for everyone to plant their seeds. So go ahead and put your seed in there. Yeah. Did each one of the holes get a little, there we go. Make sure they have some cilantro seed. That's excellent. Just so we can keep up with where we are. Now I'm gonna do the same thing over here. I'm gonna do six little holes like that and everybody gets some more seed and you can drop your seed in those little holes. We're gonna have a whole crop of cilantro. We have extra seed and we can plant some more of these later. So I'm gonna put those back in the seed pack and now make sure everything is covered with soil. You wanna soak it with water, make sure the soil is completely moist. We can leave this in the kitchen up on the counter where there's plenty of sun 
and just like the tomatoes in about seven to 10 days, these little plants will germinate. They get three or four leaves, maybe five leaves on them. We can begin to take them outside. We don't want to put them out in full hot sun yet. We want to let them acclimate and then we can plant them in the garden. We have another ingredient for salsa. Pretty good, huh? Yeah. Okay, so how about some more chips and salsa? Yeah. And some other things to eat. Come on, that sounds great. You did a good job. You know, when I was growing up, cabbage wasn't my favorite vegetable to eat unless it was some coleslaw that my grandmother made. However, I did love to grow cabbage. My grandparents grew cabbages in their garden and they were enormous, not small like these cabbage heads. I think this is the reason that I love the Bonnie Cabbage Program so much, because it introduces third graders to growing vegetables, cabbage plants. Let me show you what I mean. We have an exciting day out here at the Daisy Bates Elementary School and it's all about cabbages. Yes, cabbages. We have a young lady who grew the largest cabbage in Arkansas and she just won from the Bonnie Plant Program $1,000, Lauren Motley. So Lauren, before you uh, planted your cabbage, like the winning cabbage, had you ever grown a cabbage before? Yeah. You never had? Wow. Well, congratulations. Thank you. Are you going to grow some other things now? Yeah, I wanted to grow some strawberries and tomatoes. Good. Well, we got you started with some strawberries earlier today, so now you have to go get you a tomato. Good luck. The Bonnie Cabbage Program is nationwide, and they have, over the course of the history of this program, they have given away over 11 million cabbage plants to third graders. So Daisy Bates is a school that has four third grade classes. They have about 61 third graders and all of them planted cabbages. And Lauren was the winner not only here, but statewide. When we return, we'll check out a cool farm that's very kid centric. Deanna Rose Children's Farmstead. What a great place to take kids for a fun and educational experience. You see, the farmstead is designed to depict a turn of the century family farm with close to 200 animals, vegetables and flower gardens and so much more. My name is Stephanie Jones and we're at Deanna Rose Children's Farmstead in Overland Park, Kansas. Deanna Rose Children's Farmstead originally started at, as the Farmstead in 1978. It was renamed to Deanna Rose Children's Farmstead in 1985 in dedication to an Overland Park police officer who was killed in the line of duty. The whole original idea of the Farmstead was to teach children about farm life, to get them exposure to farm animals, we have a pygmy goat bottle feeding pen. Children can go in and feed the pygmy goats with baby bottles. And then we also have chickens that they can feed. And also they get to experience watching a dairy goat being milked every day. My name is Audra. I work here at Deanna Rose Children's Farmstead. We're in the dairy barn where I do milkings every day at 9.30 and 4.30. We're glad you're here. This is Heidi, she is a brown Swiss. She's one of our two milking cows that we have here at Deanna Rose. The amount that a cow gives varies greatly depending on their breed and what they are fed every day. Um, Holsteins are known for their big production in the dairy industry. They give the most milk and they can milk between 80 and 100 pounds every day. I really hope that the kids who come into the dairy barn um, learn to appreciate the large animals that we have here and what they do 
for society in general. Um, I'm really big in ag education, and so I hope these kids go away thinking, oh, we milked a cow today, that was awesome, I wanna go have dairy products now because I know where it comes from and I know why it's so good for me. Our attendance at any given weekend with nice weather like this, we could get 5,000 visitors today. In a season, we can get over 400,000 visitors visiting the farmstead. If our fishing pond is open, they get to go and fish in our pond, and that's sometimes their first experience of fishing. They can go into our old schoolhouse. It's a one-room schoolhouse that is actually one original one that was rebuilt on our grounds, and they can have a school lesson in there. Mm -hmm. And then they can go to the original side of the farmstead, and that's where they get to see more animals. Oftentimes we get grandparents who will tell me, oh, I used to bring their dad here when he was a little boy. So you know that they're just creating that whole memory making experience for them. And of course the kids love to see our bisons and our prairie dog. So they see, get to see animals that they don't normally see at a zoo. that it creates a great learning environment about all the different animals that are here in Kansas that is what Kansas is about and it's also an experience for families to make memories that last a lifetime. Coming up, a fun mosaic project your kids will love. An indoor project that's a perfect opportunity to express some creativity with kids is making a rock mosaic. You see, these mosaics are easy to make and they keep everyone occupied for at least a little while. You're going to start by preheating your oven to 250 degrees and by making some salt dough. Now don't worry, you should already have these items in the kitchen. You see, it's as simple as one cup of salt, two cups of flour, and one cup of water. Now just mix all of these ingredients together in a bowl. Sprinkle a little flour on a clean counter and set the mixed dough on top. Using a rolling pin, roll out the dough to any shape you like. Then set the dough on a cookie sheet and let the kids run wild using any types of rocks or glass beads. What they're going to do is create their own masterpiece. Now when these little Picassos have finished their work of art, place the cookie sheet in the oven and bake it for about two hours. Once it's cooled, spray it with several coats of acrylic spray. Now you have a beautiful rock mosaic to set anywhere in the garden. There's more garden style just after the break. Kids learn best when they can touch and feel things. That's why I really love the Garfield Park Conservatory in Chicago. You see, last summer I had a chance to visit and got a first class tour of the children's garden from my friend Robin Klein. Robin, this is such an active place. Yeah. The kids are loving it. Yeah, they love it. Well, here we are in the middle of a conservatory. You want to know that it's a kid's place just for the slide. I know. Right? They're, they're crazy about this. It's kind yeah. of fun. This is, must be the big feature here, these, yes, these uh, have, carnivorous plants. If you're a kid, you want to see a plant move. So um, you, have the, you have the pitcher plants as well, I can see there. Yep, the pitcher yeah. plants. And um, we have actually a pitcher plant. We might be able to see what it had for breakfast today. It's oh, yeah, bit, yeah, yeah. A little more passive. I love this one. It hangs from the tree. It hangs from the tree. 
and it's been digesting I'm here, pour it something. Pouring my hands, in I want to so see what's see in there. What it had for breakfast? Oh my goodness! Look, there's some, some ants. ant bodies. There's an ant right there. Oh my goodness! Oh, look. oh. oh whoop! Ah, there's one. That one that got away. <laughs> and there's some debris from some dead yeah. insects. Yeah. Well. Wow, we just saved this spider's life. I think we did. I'm right. going to turn him loose. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. So it's really about a tactile experience, and it's about it? yeah, like what things it's feel about making like, and plants um, ready and available for touching and looking at. So yeah. everything in this room is so touchable. Anything goes in anything, here, and it needs to, you know, it needs to be sort of polka dotted or striped. Right, or right. Big I or love little. the colors. So visually, yeah. it's very visually, attractive. Visually, this is like. But well, what about look. touching things? Are there plants that they can touch? Oh yeah, look, sensitive plants. Oh, this is one of our star plants. So the thing about plants is they don't move. Right. At least you can't see them move very often, but this one, watch what happens when you touch it. Ah, yeah. closed right up. Yeah. So it's actually, it's a it's an adaptation that it's trying to protect itself and look like it's dead. That is so cool. Yeah. Let's try this one right here. Look at it close up. Oh. It's amazing. Yeah. You can see where kids would just go crazy over that. Oh, yes. This. So we've talked about color, we've talked about sort of visual senses and touch. What about taste? Anything oh, that's, can, that's really where it's at. There's, um, there's a lovely plant called the lollipop plant over here that I'd love to show you. Oh yeah, okay, yeah. let's take a look. Okay. Hey, this is a lime tree. Yeah, it's a lime tree. This is one of our special plants here. Now here's a shrimp plant. Uh, you call it a lollipop plant. Yeah, we call it a lollipop plant because it's in the children's garden. Yeah. And one of the great things about this uh, lollipop plant is you can take this flower yeah. and actually suck the nectar from the flower. Oh, wow. That is so, so it's, sweet. It's really sweet. That's awesome. You'll never forget this. A natural smoothie. Yes, absolutely. A <laughs> lollipop plant. So good. This is marvelous. Yeah. Thank you so much. Oh, it was wonderful to have you yeah, here. Yeah, it's really, you feel really, like a kid again? I do feel like a kid again. <laughs> this is really, really outstanding. Great. Well, thank Great. you. Well, keep up the good work. Great. There's more garden style just after the break. I hope you found some ways that you and the kids can grow, cook, and design your world in a fun and interesting way. Oh, look at this, excellent. All right, we'll have tomatoes up here in the windowsill, little plants in no time. So when do we get to eat salsa? Well, it'll be a couple of months on these, but hey, we've got some over here. Why don't we go have some more salsa and chips? Very good. Hey, I'm Alan Smith for Garden Style. Thanks for joining me. Hey, this is a lime tree. Yeah, it's a lime tree. This is one of our special plants here. I love it. Oh, look at this sign. It says, just like picking your nose in public, picking our fruit ruins the experience for others. <laughs> We're growing swamp tomatoes. Watch them. They'll do the backstroke. They're trying to run away from alligators and rattlesnakes. They no, don't. No. Mm -mm. mm -mm. Water moccasins do. Water moccasins, water. Get it. Yeah, you get it. Oh, I can't stand it. That's so exciting. That's better than going to Disneyland. That's better than the uh, roller coaster. <clears throat> oh, I have chips. All right, yeah, here we go. Yeah, here we go. Yeah, I'm going to read it like this. Well, hello there, everyone. Oh, I can't? Okay. <laughs>